So if you watch the rest of our energy series, this third part is gonna show you how to integrate your devices into the energy dashboard in Home Assistant. If you haven't caught the last couple of videos, click up here to head to our energy playlist. Part one was how to set up this Emporia Energy Whole House Energy Monitor. The second video was how I set up MeterMon to collect data from my gas and water meter and potentially electrical meters if that is supported by your electrical meter. And in this third video in the series, we're gonna show you how to set up the Emporia Energy Monitor in Home Assistant and how to take a whole house energy monitor and add it into the energy dashboard. I've also included a couple hacks and tips on how to bring in your smart plugs that are supported by Home Assistant into your energy dashboard if you wanna report on those as well. Before we hop into the main part of the video, if you'd like to support this channel, I've got a link below to buy me a beer. Thank you to Paul Petzar and others who have bought me a beer here in the past. It's really appreciated and it helps me know that you like my content. Let's go ahead and jump into the first part of the video where we set up the Emporia Energy whole house monitor in Home Assistant. Let's go get the third party integration installed and ready so we can bring our Emporia Energy device into Home Assistant. So to do that, you're gonna to need to already have hacks installed. And if you haven't got that installed, click here above to go to my video about how to install it. It's fairly simple and very powerful and it makes it very quick to set up some of these new plugins. This custom integration comes from GitHub user Magico13. Now, they're the ones that have developed this great integration that is able to bring in your Emporia Energy into Home Assistant and have it treat like a natively supported energy meter. So if we scroll down a little bit on the page here, there's on step four, he's got this URL, which is actually the same URL as, your, as in your bar above. We'll go ahead and copy that location, hop back over into Home Assistant, head into Hacks, go into Integrations, and then click the three dots at the top and do Custom Repositories. So we'll paste in that URL, and then go, and then the category type is Integration. Click Add, and now we see this Custom Repository show up, and click Add again and it's ready to go. So it may show up automatically in the store, um, but get the little error message saying it's already in the store, it's because I, I added it already. Um, once it shows up here, it'll pop up as new repository or you can click explore and type in Emporia. And then we'll click install this repository in Hacks. The latest version is fine and click install. Now once that's done, obviously with every integration, you need to go ahead and restart Home Assistant. So we'll go ahead and click over to configuration, server controls, restart. All right, now that Home Assistant's back up and running, we, we need to install the integration. So let's click on uh, Configuration, Integrations, and then we'll click Add Integration here and search for Emporia. You see our Emporia view, and it's gonna go ahead and think. So now we have to enter our username and password, just like we did in the app, and we can select if we wanna have all the sensors in there, which I do. I want all the data, so one minute, the one day, and the one month sensor. Click Submit, and now it'll go ahead and grab those sensors and add them into Home Assistant. So now you'll see all your different ones, and you can, of course, add these to Aries if you'd like. But I'm gonna go ahead and just hit Finish. Now we can actually click right on here and see the different devices, and then click on them, and then we'll be able to see each of the individual sections that it creates. Now it's gonna create one sensor for each one of the individual zones in your Emporia. So if you have just the main section, so if you just if you don't have any of the additional sensors, you'll get one with the name of your device. So if you gave it a custom name in there, it'll show up in Home Assistant with that custom name. Now since I have eight sensors, and what it's actually done is um, I discovered that I have eight sensors, but I've marked I, two of them are actually in the kitchen. And so what it's done is it's combined those two into a single sensor and that's showing up in the app. So only have seven sensors in the app and only seven sensors showing up in Home Assistant. So that's why if you see there's a discrepancy there, that's why. And the, uh, the folks from Emporia liked the video and they've actually gone ahead and shipped me the other eight sensors. So I'll be installing those sometime in the coming weeks. Thanks to those guys over there. Now, you'll notice you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the seven sensors I talked about, the whole house sensor, which is the name I've given it, and then there's one called balance. Balance is all of the remainder of the, of the energy that the individual sensors don't pick up. So if you don't have any sensors, you won't, I think everything will be a balance, you won't have a balance at all. Um, or if you have all of your main loads accounted for, your balance will be very low. But in my case right now, uh, I'm showing 749 watts of power that's not accounted for. You'll notice each of the sensors have, it's come up with three sensors. It's got a one day sensor, which is that cumulative daily sensor. So this will show all the data, all the, the energy used up until this point during the day. So that's why it's a higher number. So my, this zone has used 1.19 kilowatt hours today. Then you've got the one minute. So this is what's been used in the last minute. And then you've got the one for the entire month. How much How much energy has this used in the last month? Which of course today is the 1st of October, so it's only got the same usage 
from today. Now you can add each of these individual sensors into a dashboard if you want to, but here in the next section, I'm gonna show you how to add these into the new energy dashboard and have it show each of them together. So again, I've got the main sensor and this is for the whole house. And then I've got each individual zone and then I've got the balance to take care of the rest. Now in this next section, we'll go ahead and add it to the energy dashboard. All right, so in this section, let's go ahead and look at how to add our energy meter into Home Assistant. Now, again, I'm gonna specifically be showing you about the Emporia one, but if you have another compatible energy meter, you can follow along the same steps and get them added into the energy dashboard. So first thing we need to do is click on energy, and if this is the first time that you've gone through this, it'll take you through the setup wizard. Um, if you have already set up something and you need to make a modification, if you go to configuration and scroll all the way down, Right below tags, you'll see this new energy section and you'll be able to add them in here manually. But uh, real quick, this is only available in 2021.08 and later. In 2021.09, they added in the ability to do gas metering, which I talked about in the last video. If you don't see this energy dashboard, you need to check two things. The first thing is you need to make sure that you're on the correct version, which is 2021.08 or later. And the second thing is you need to make sure you have the default dashboards set up in Home Assistant. So if we go into my configuration.yaml and scroll up to the top, we have the default config. If you don't have this defined in your configuration.yaml, you won't be getting these new features added automatically. You have to add them manually. So if you don't see the energy dashboard and you're on the correct version, make sure to check the default configuration is in your configuration.yaml. All right, so we'll pop back into the energy dashboard and we're gonna go ahead and go through the wizard. So in my case, I don't have any solar arrays in my house, so I don't have this add return, but I can add consumption. So if you click here, it's gonna show you all of those various sensors that are available in here. And you have to remember that sensors are only gonna be available that show a consumed energy for the day. So a kilowatt hour, that's cumulative. And I'll show you here in a minute how to add additional sensors to this area. So in my case, I want, this needs to be my whole house sensor. So if I scroll down and we see whole house, the Holland house one, one day in one month, these are both cumulative sensors. So I need the one day, which will give me the cumulative for the day. Now, if I wanted to, I could also track a cost in here. So if I, if you're a place that happens to have just one set value, for your energy, no matter what time of day or time of the year, you can set that here. You can create an entity that will track the current price. So if you have an integration with your grid provider, or if you wanted, if you've made a custom one, you can select that from here, or you can do one that will track the cost separately from this energy meter. So if you have a current price, it'll automatically calculate it out, or you can add the static price. I'm, I'm assuming sometime in the future, they'll add, it, they'll allow you to change the, the currency on here. It's currently in euros. So I'm gonna just click do not track price. So we've got that in there. And if you had multiple ones, you could add them in here. And this is gonna be the cumulative one for your house. Uh, you can also do the this CO2 signal integration, which is pretty cool. What it will actually do is um, you can request a token, it's a free API, and it will tell what location you are and using its database, find out if any of your energy generation is being offset by renewables. So I think there's a percentage of mine that's being offset by wind energy. Uh, we have a wind farm down further into Missouri. Um, so I think a percentage of mine is being offset by that. So it would show you how much of your grid usage is being offset by a carbon neutral or renewable. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit next. Um, I don't have solar panels, so I can skip this section here. I don't have a home battery system like a Tesla wall. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for somebody to do that, but that'll be in the future. And then we could add a gas source like I showed last week. So we'll go ahead and hit next to skip that. And then here's where we can add individual devices. Now these are your individual consumers that will show up at the bottom of the energy section. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of my one day sensors for my various zones, including the balance. All right, so we've got all of our consumers added in here. Um, this is my test instance, so I don't have any of my individual plugs. Those you can add in, but we have to add a special uh, template sensor, which we'll do at the end. And so now you'll see uh, it's gonna take up to two hours for it to actually start doing that statistical work on the existing sensors. So I flipped over here to my live instance um, where it's been collecting statistical data for quite a while now. And you can look and see here, we can see how much energy is being consumed for the week. We can look at where the energy, so since I have grid, if I had a renewable resource to be up here, but the grid, you can see it's pushing energy from the grid to the house and my gas consumption, since I'm not consuming any gas, is still set at zero right now. Yeah, so now if you look back here, we can see gas consumption in the last few days. I haven't consumed any gas today, uh, which is surprising because, oh, that sensor's offline right now. So that, just ignore that, but you can see the gas consumption for the past. Now, if we look at the bottom here, we can see we've got things like my energy balance. So this is the balance for the house that it's not picked up by the sensors and you see that's a huge consumption so there's a definitely a big blind spot so once i get those new sensors added in i'll be able to take that down quite a bit of percentage 
We also have then each of the different zones and how much they've consumed. We haven't used the oven much. Um, we did last week. So there is some there. And then I've also got my, if you see right here, I've got a special sensor for my 3D printer and how much energy I've consumed over that. So that's this next section. I'll show you how to take a, if you have a smart plug that's reporting in watts and get that to convert over into kilowatt hours for you to use in your dashboard. So now you've seen what the grid energy by default looks like coming into Home Assistant. You've got your main sensors brought in. You've got the sensors that do individual rooms brought in. And now you can see what the overall usage looks like in a house. So this next section, I'm gonna show you a couple of little hacks that you can do to add in your smart plugs and let them show up in a, as a consumed entity. Now, obviously they're gonna be much, much smaller unless they're connected to something like your refrigerator. Um, they'll be much, much smaller and harder to see on the graph, but it's still nice to have that data in there. All right, so in this last section, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to hack in some of your existing sensors into the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard. Now, this again could be superseded in a future update, so if that is the case, please check the comments below. I'll have added a note to say, hey, this last section is no longer required. Um, but for right now, this is the only way to get in a sensor that outputs watts and bring that into Home Assistant with kilowatt hours. If you go into your developer tools, states, and you search for de device class underscore colon power, it'll show you all the devices that are outputting information in watts. So you'll see I've got even some of my existing sensors from my whole house energy meter show up in here as well, so you can ignore those. But I do have a couple of these in here that I'm, I do wanna add in because they are, they're not significant us users of power, but they are enough that I wanna be able to see them in the dashboard. So the first one is my 3D printer power. Now I've got a smart plug attached to my 3D printer right here next to me, and that can output in, not only can I use that in OctoPrint to turn it off when it's not in use to save power, I can also see how much how much power is actually used by the 3D printer while it's printing. That is a just a standard, um, like I said, power meter, but it doesn't output kilowatt hours. We have to use a sensor called integration to do the math for us. So Home Assistant has this integration sensor that uses a Riemann sum integral, which is even math that I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to have to get into. It's giving me flashbacks from school. So we won't talk about what it does, but what you actually get out of it is it will take a sensor and convert it into kilowatt hours so that you can use that data in your energy dashboard. So um, if you go to this link here below, it'll take you to the page explaining what this sensor does but I'll just quickly show you how I how I use it. So in my live instance here, I've got, plot, it's under my, this is under my sensors.yaml. I've got platform integration. Source is that sensor that I wanna take the power from. So if I go back to my developer tools, I've got sensor.3d underscore printer underscore power. Currently that's showing zero watts because the printer's off. But if I put that in here and then give it a new name, so this output is the output name, 3D underscore printer underscore energy underscore spent. I wanna give it a prefix of kilowatt. So it's, since it's going to convert watt to kilowatt and kilowatt is what it's looking for in the dashboard, I give it a unit prefix here. If you, had, you wanted to do something like megawatt, which I know is way too much, um, but you could change that if you were doing this for a different type of sensor, you could change that unit prefix and it would know that you mean something else. And then it's gonna round it to two significant digits. So you notice I've got two of these sensors in here. So once you add those in there, obviously go through the standard rigmarole of checking your files and then rebooting Home Assistant. Once you do that, then if we go back to developer tools, now instead of searching for device class power, we're looking for device class energy. And we'll see right here, I've got a sensor 3D printer sensor energy spent. And this is that cumulative power consumed from the 3D printer. Now, when we put this into the energy dashboard, Home Assistant will start doing that statistical work on it and then start cutting up the usage of the printer and allowing us to display that in our dashboard. So notice it shows the source printer from here as well. So that's the total cumulative energy spent and permanently for this for this particular sensor. It's not going to reset on a monthly or weekly basis. So now we've got our sensor established, we can go ahead and add that into our home assistant. So I've already got mine added. I'll show you in the dashboard where it is. So if we go back to your energy, configuration energy under individual devices now, you'll see I've got this 3D printer energy spent. Now I've also created another one for my living room fan, which shows up in here as well, right here. So this living room plug energy spent. So I can add that in here as well. So now you can take any sensor that outputs watts and have it converted into kilowatt hours for you to be able to put in your home assistant 
dashboard. I wanted to add one more section to this. I know I said the last section was the last section, but I'd be remiss not to mention that I found a uh, way of displaying the information that I wanted on my energy dashboard. And I wanted to just to go ahead and add it to this video since I think it was completely relevant to this. Now, I'm actually filming this the day before the video goes up. Um, I was editing and I realized I didn't want to talk about a particular section and I wanted to go ahead and add that in um, after I did some research yesterday and found the perfect graphing card that can be added into Home Assistant to give you kind of what I feel is the deficiency in the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard. So real quick, I want to show you kind of what bothers me or what I would like to see more in the Energy Dashboard that's not currently in it. Um, the biggest thing is I can't break down any of these individual devices by rooms or by areas so for example the office here um, I have multiple sensors in this room that can tell me what the consumption is of various things I'm actually getting ready to add another one for my UPS in there because I've got some equipment in the closet and I wanted to be able to break that down and show a live breakdown of what each room looks like if I have additional sensors in there so for example in the kitchen um, I have a sensor on the dishwasher and I'd love to be able to see okay how much of this percentage of usage is going towards the dishwasher instead of just the general purpose uh, energy in the room and that kind of helps me track that and find what things are really consuming more energy than I think they should be so so to solve this problem, I did some research. I tried to find some various different cards that support that type of things. And there's actually a couple of them out there. The problem is they broke on some recent additions to Home Assistant. So I actually found a really cool card that can do a breakdown similar to this. So you can see here, I've got the entire, my entire house and all of the different various um, power meters in the different rooms and it can tell me percentage breakdown and show live as these change what they are and the current usage of each of the items. So um, it's a really cool card. It's very flexible, super powerful. It's gonna take a little bit to get used to, but I'll show you my examples and have them in the blog post. As you can see here, I've got the my office energy breakdown and there's 409 watts being accounted for by other things in the room, um, my laptop, the light, things like that that aren't that don't have necessarily have a meter on them. This type of card is really easy to do. So first, let me show you how to install it. The name of the card is Apex Charts, and it uses the Apex Charts JavaScript library to make these awesome looking charts and really flexible. And if you look at this, if you look at his instructions, it's very detailed. There's a lot of information here and there's a lot you can do. So um, real quickly, I'm gonna show you how to install this and then I'm gonna show you how to configure it like I do. So the first thing you need to do is grab the URL up here, hop over into your hacks instance. All right, so we'll go into our hacks instance, go into front end, and click explore and add repositories. So then we're gonna search for Apex, and we see the Apex charts card. So we'll go ahead and click quickly, get that installed, and reload our browser. Now, if we go to overview and add a new card, you'll see this actually has an example in here for Apex Charts. So they give you some examples here that you can play with, um, with some default information and data generators. Like I said, there's a lot you can do with it, but let me show you how I'm using it right now. So I'm gonna flip back over to my, home, my live instance here, go to my energy tab, and let's break down these cards. So I've got two cards here, one being a pie chart, and this pie chart, um, we'll hit edit. So it's a custom type of Apex Charts card the chart type is pi, and the header, these are just some things that you can use to change some of the settings in there. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna see the header, because I can actually get rid of it if I wanted to. Now it's gone, but I want it in there. You can change the title. You can show states if you wanna have the states show above. You can have those uh, set to false. If you wanna colorize them, which I think you probably want to, you can set that to true. And then I just have a whole series of entities. Now, because the way my whole house energy monitor works is I have that, that black color there is the balance. So I'm always gonna know what is made up of the additional, I don't have to do any math. The meter does that for me automatically. It tells me exactly um, how much energy is not being accounted for. So I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to do any math in here. So I just have a list of all the different entities that I want displayed here. And it makes this awesome chart. Now I can, for each entity, I customize the name to make it more relevant. Um, there are a bunch of other options you can do here as well if you wanted to, which you can check that in the in the repo. But for now, that's kind of a basic card that just lets you split any set of entities into a pie chart and then show all the data there. Now for my office energy, this required a little bit of math. So this is a, a type of donut. The reason I'm using the donut chart is because you can embed a total in the middle where it sums everything and then displays the total in the middle. So I have this new apex config section here, plot options, pie, donut, 
the background's transparent, labels I want on, and I have this total function on. Again, we have the header. Now we have an entity in here that I just placed. I've called in my office sensor, which is the total energy consumption in this room. I brought that in and that is being defined as X in this mathematical formula down here. And I gave it, gave it a custom name called remaining. And so I'm gonna do a transform on this. And that transform is as simple as just returning a floating point version of this number here. And then it subtracts parse another, it parses it again, has dot states. And then it's gonna take the 3D printer power dot state. And it's gonna do it again for the office kettle, which is in the, in the bathroom over there. And the monitor switch. It's gonna take each of these and subtract them and then give me the remaining amount. And that's this blue value you, you see out here on the outside ring. So again, this is their own kind of language built to the JavaScript language that it uses to be able to do this mathematical formula, but you could take this and obviously make a sum out of it. You could use it to make subtraction, division, all kinds of interesting things out of that. So, um, and then I have the other two items displayed on here, which of course, since they're not very big, they don't consume that much energy. Anyway, I wanted to make sure to show you kind of that because I really think that that makes a difference. That's kind of what I want to see in the energy dashboard. I want to be able to break down each room or each area and be able to see using these other very sensors around the house, what is being accounted for and what's not being accounted for. So uh, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that's something you can utilize in there. And I'm going to go ahead and send you back to past Ryan. All right. So there you go. Now you have your whole house energy sensor set up in home assistant. So you can retrieve that data. You've also been able to add that to your energy dashboard. And I've shown you a couple of hacks on how to take smart plugs and get them into the energy dashboard as well. And I've shown you some of the things that I, I feel are lacking in the dashboard and hopefully the developers can get added in future versions. So hopefully this video series was helpful for you. I got a lot of great feedback on the first video and hopefully the second and third videos are also helpful to users as this new energy dashboard evolves. I'll be making more videos. And as I potentially find more cool ways of integrating that energy into my home assistant, I'll make future videos in the series. So if you haven't, if you've, if you haven't caught the rest of the energy series, click here to watch that playlist. If you'd like to let the algorithm select a video for you, click up here above. And if you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed by clicking this button here. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your week.